The good news is, there is nothing unnatural about it. 하룻밤꿈으로 끝날 뻔했던 초전도체가 다시 시즌2로 접어들고 있습니다. 한국 연구진이 세계 최초로 개발한 상온상압 초전도체 LK-99를 둘러싼 논란이 더욱 깊어지면서 세계 과학자들의 검증이 이어졌는데요. 처음엔 긍정적이었던 과학자들도 실험을 거듭하며 초전도체가 아닐 가능성이 크다는 검증 결과가 잇따라 나오고 있습니다. 지난 9일 미국 메릴랜드 대 응진물질이론센터는 앞서 지적했듯이 LK-99의 플랫밴드는 초전도가 아니라 자기 불안정성을 유발하는 것으로 보인다며 이것이 중국 베이징 대 국제양자물질센터에 이어 프린스턴 대 연구에서도 검증됐다고 밝혔습니다. 미국 프린스턴 대와 스페인 도노스티아 국제물리센터 독일 막스플랑크 고체 화학물리연구소 등이 참여한 국제연구진 역시 논문에서 AK-99는 상온상압 초전도체라기보다는 자석일 가능성이 크다고 발표했고 점점 더 AK-99가 초전도체가 아닐 가능성이 커져가는 상황이었죠. 해외 주요 대학 실험실에서도 초전도체를 입증하지 못했다는 결과가 나오며 세계 유명 과학학술지 사이언스와 네이처는 AK-99에 대해 짧고 화려했던 삶이 끝났다며 학계에 부정적인 반응을 보도했습니다. 그 중에서 도가장 단호한 태도로 초전도체에 대한 부정적인 연구 결과를 냈던 인도 아와나 교수 연구팀이 있습니다. 그런데 이들은 한국 퀀텀 연구소와 연락을 하고 나서 완전히 반전되는 연구 결과를 내놨습니다. LK-99는 아직 희망적입니다. 아와나 교수팀의 연구원은 트위터에 이건 사실입니다. 이틀 전 교수님의 설명을 듣고 저 역시 LK-99의 회의적이었지만 이제 의견이 바뀌었습니다. 그 어느 때보다도 이것을 확신합니다 라며 강력하게 주장하고 있는데요. 그들이 찾아낸 것은 아직 번역되지 않은 한국어 논문이었습니다. LK-99는 상온상압 초전도체라기보다는 자석일 가능성이 크다는 연구 결과에 대해 이미 한국어 논문은 언급하고 있었기 때문입니다. 따라서 세계과학계는 다시 제대로 된 검증 작업을 시작하고 있습니다. 또다시 해외 방송들의 기대 역시 커지고 있죠. And speaking of innovation, there is talk of a major invention in the world of semiconductors. Let me underline the word major. Some are calling it the holy grail of chip, a superconductor. So what exactly is the buzz all about? Time for a quick science lesson. It's a material through which you can pass electricity. You can regulate the flow. Meaning, electricity will pass in some conditions, but it won't otherwise. Superconductors have the power to revolutionize how we live. They're already at the core of life-saving MRI machines and super-fast levitating trains. And now new research promises to push their power even further with better superconductors that could power quantum computers or increase the efficiency of everything from electric cars to your smartphone. We envision a complete transformation of tomorrow's society. We want to take society into the superconducting century. Let's try an example. Imagine you're driving on a straight highway. Your car is the electricity. The highway is the conductor. Now imagine there are traffic signals in between. Naturally, you would have to stop. So you would be slower and you would lose fuel and time. That's what a semiconductor is like. At its core, electricity is the flow of electrons between atoms. Materials that help facilitate this flow are called conductors and are often made of metals such as aluminum, copper and gold. But when you pass electricity through these metals, they lose energy, basically through friction, as the electrons pass through the conductors. The consequence of losing so much energy is more than just generating excess heat. It also costs big money. In the US alone, we lose about 6% of the electricity that we create just by running it through the electric grid. The cost of that wasted electricity adds up to billions of dollars each year. But superconductors have a superpower. They don't waste any electricity and they don't create any excess heat. They do this because the electricity passes through without any friction. But until recently, superconducting was only possible at ultra cold temperatures, somewhere around minus 450 degrees Fahrenheit. These superconductors allow electrons to pair up and move without striking any of the ions that make up the metal. This actually changes the magnetic field around the metal and makes possible the incredible phenomenon of quantum magnetic levitation, where magnets actually hover over the superconductor. Enter Marty McFly. He's not a hoverboard! <laughs> the problem is it's extremely expensive to keep things so cold, which has sharply limited the use of superconductors. With superconductors, there are no traffic signals. It's pedal to the metal. You save time and fuel. Scientists in South Korea claim to have created such a substance, a superconductor. They're calling it LK-99. 
You make it by introducing copper atoms to a mineral called lead apatite. Two studies have been published so far. The initial one has three authors. The second one has six. Other labs in the US and China are already testing it out. But how can we use them? Again, let's use two examples. We've all seen how power grids work. They transfer electricity using semiconductors, which means resistance. And this resistance results in some power being wasted. Distribution loss. No such problem with superconductors. You won't lose power while transferring it. Imagine how much electricity we would save. Another example is gadgets. Computing time is proportional to the speed of electricity. The faster you can conduct, the faster the results. Again, superconductors can help. They could make your computers and phones much faster. So why haven't we made them before? Well, superconductors do exist. We use them in MRI machines and medical imaging. But all of them have one problem. They need extremely low or extremely high temperatures to work. One example is caprate. It's a superconductor, but it can only work at minus 135 degrees Celsius. Your colleague at office cannot handle 38 degrees. Good luck with minus 135. My point is it's not possible. You need superconductors that work at room temperature, which is why LK99 is so important. The Korean scientists say it does work at room temperature. Do others agree? Three labs in China have managed to create LK99 and they're reporting different results, all three of them. One of them showed LK99 levitating over a magnet. Only superconductors do that, they levitate. Other materials spin like a compass. I guess that's a plus point. Well, here to tell us exactly why superconductors are such a big deal is Michael Biasik, founder and CEO of QCTRL, a quantum sensing company in Sydney. Michael, are you buying into all of this? Well, you say we have been here before. Could it be different this time around? And I mean, they call it the holy grail because it works at room temperature. Right. So this is a kind of material that allows electricity to flow with no loss, with no resistance. And that has huge potential impacts on everything from the medical industry over to power distribution. But, you know, not much has changed in the last 30 years since we first, by blind luck, discovered a new class of what's kind of erroneously called high temperature superconductors. They have to be really, really cold. We've had other claims before just in the last two years and major scientific retraction scandals where very big claims were made and later shown to be incorrect. We're all hopeful that that's not the case here, but everybody is waiting on edge to see what happens. Michael, give us a sense of what this technology can do. Some have talked about uh, essentially giving an iPhone the same power as a quantum computer. Now, if that was the case, I mean, this is, it would put, I mean, at, at least the uh, uh, Moore's law into the dustbin of history. That's one part of it. But it would be such a massive shift. And you'd have to wonder how come nobody else came up with this before. And how does this get verified? Well, I, the first thing is to say, if it is true, the impact can't be understood. <laughs> We've been looking for this kind of technology for a long time. Uh, you know, anytime you, you go get an MRI on your knee, you're using an exceptionally expensive imaging system, mostly because they have to use these very cold superconducting magnets. Imagine replacing that with something that just works at room temperature. Or imagine the, the ability to send power from very distant offshore generation points like offshore wind or offshore solar thousands of miles away with effectively no loss. That's absolutely transformational to the way we generate and distribute electricity. Well, I, I think everything about this material has been a surprise. Uh, if it's superconducting, it's a surprise. If it's not superconducting and it's just an extremely strong magnet, why it's such a strong magnet? It's also a surprise. So I think there is quite a lot of new science. There's definitely something likely to emerge from this that's positive and impactful for at least the scientific community. That's why so many of us, even though as good scientists, we're trying to be skeptical of the claims and wait for independent validation, we're also very excited about what could be opened up by this, both in terms of application and in terms of basic knowledge about the way the world works. The good news is, there is nothing unnatural about it. The laws of physics support the idea of a superconductor. They can be made. It's all about stumbling on the right material. Even if LK99 is not that holy grail, it is still valuable. Each failed invention gives a lot of information. Information that could help us build a working superconductor. 여러분의 소중한 의견을 남겨주세요. 바쁘시더라도 구독과 좋아요 부탁드립니다. 지금까지 단골이시였습니다. 시청해주셔서 감사합니다.